Yeah, good morning and welcome to Summit. My name is Jumoke Michaels. I don't really know how to describe today in Lagos, but um, it's really, really hectic today. You're welcome once again. Banji, good morning. Jumoke, this is uh, maybe day 12 or day 13 yeah. of the NSAS protest, and it doesn't seem to abate yet. However, it's gaining more and more momentum, and it's now nationwide uh, celebrities. Um, very high profile individuals have started joining the, the, the train. And uh, we only hope, we pray that government would actually see it as a national uh, urgent assignment to engage this youth and bring this issue to a very reasonable end. The demands, of course, is being expanded and we don't really know what will be the latest addition to the demands. But uh, this morning, okay, I spent uh, just uh, because I left home very early. Uh, 5, 5.30, and I go to Kenya by 6.37. But I couldn't well, gain access. Time, it was already, the In fact, were already, they were already the protesters were already on the road, and I couldn't gain access to this office. Mm. But that's as bad as it is. Mm. People traveling to Ireland and all that, I'm sure many people did not get to the office today. Mm. So it's a national lockdown, mm. and they pray. All right, and then we also have the uh, same reports from other states, especially Abuja, Benin, and... Um, um, Ogun State, that all this, the traffic, the heavy traffic is same because of the uh, presence of the protesters on the roads. But we believe that um, the government will really actually do what they are supposed to do. So that's our focus on the program this morning. We're talking about agitations expanded to accommodate <coughs> other demands. Like Banji said, the demands are expanding. It started with just NSAS. But that today, it has accommodated so many other national issues. Well, joining us on the discussion today, we have uh, Mr. Justice Ubuebu. He's a human rights activist and an attorney at law. Good morning, sir. Good morning. It Good is my pleasure today. once more. We know you have been at the forefront of this fight <laughs> for a long time. Yeah. Um, would you, would, would, yeah you, so it would be right to call you an activist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's what I have been. That's your life. Yes. Because we, 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 you see, anything you're doing in life, many, many things, at times it has to be a calling. I think it's part of my calling to be a lawyer, to be a human rights lawyer, to be an activist, especially for the benefit of others. To give voice to the voiceless, to speak for people who cannot speak for themselves, especially in a country where we, 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 we operate with a high level of impunity and today i am happy and i thank god that our people have woken up i hope you didn't uh, work too much to get here this morning well i am uh, well uh, uh, will i say i'm lucky because uh, many of the protesters on the road they know me okay. so anywhere i go to as i was crossing but i have to park my car very far to take it was even a bike person that volunteered to bring me here even I couldn't, he couldn't also have access. He has to drop me somewhere. I have to trek that. But this is not the first thing we are trekking. We've been doing that since 2015, if you remember. If I we even did a similar thing in 2012, you remember? Yeah. <laughs> Occupy Nigeria. Occupy Nigeria. But I'm even expecting all those people that did that there to come out now. Where are they? Maybe the maybe is uh, this one is for the younger generation. No, no, no. Yes, but but the mom, like Banji okay, said, they are the first. They are the first. Yes, it is getting momentum. People are beginning to join. That, that time we call it Save Nigeria Group. Are we no longer ready in Save Nigeria? This is the time to Save Nigeria. It is now or never. All right. Well, um, um, the the Minister of uh, Information and uh, Culture, Alaji Lai Mohammed, actually came out yesterday on, on two days ago on the national on the national television, saying that uh, well, those who actually started this protest meant well and uh, they were very sincere with the protest and all that but uh, the protest has been infiltrated the protesters rather have been infiltrated by new people with new uh, vision i mean new, 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 new demands new demands and then a uh, uh, new agenda so to speak that uh, even those who started it have actually lost control and that uh, the way it's going the government cannot fold its arms and watch things go out of hand because it was it was actually referring to the ugly incident 
in the Osho State, Oshogo, two days ago, where two people again lost their lives as a result of I mean, outcome of this, I mean, aftermath of the protest. The governor came out to address them, but it became fatal. Two people lost their lives. So, Honorable, I mean, Alaji Lai Mohammed was actually saying this cannot continue. And he's saying that it could lead to anarchy. And lead to anarchy. So, what's your perspective on all of this? Is it that youth have lost control? Those who have just started have lost control because they don't have leader so to speak. They said they don't want any uh, arrowhead. They want everybody to be involved. Is it that that's well, part of the problem? You see, the truth is this. This is part of the problem we're having in the nation also. Uh, Aladilia Mohammed is a Nigerian. He has his children, despite the fact that they may not be living here. But the truth is that we are all Nigerians. I'm aware he has children here. No, no, no. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. I said, despite the fact that they may or may not be staying here, but they are all Nigerians. First of all, our identity, our identity still bears Nigeria. We all have the green card of Nigerian passports and all the rest. Now, <clears throat> a rider to that, he should have come so open to say that uh, it is not being politics. That, because that's, the, that's what he's trying to refer to. Let's be realistic. To ourselves, Alaji Muhammad was one of the people that did 2012 protests. You remember, he was also in the forefront. So, why is he complaining? You see, let's I don't know why people well, well, I don't blame them. We were taught stable manners when we were growing up. They say you don't eat and do what talk, at least that's what they are doing. Many of them today that are in government, they are eating, so that makes them they are not more talking what they are supposed to do in 2015 when he was on the other side was he not talking now the youths started with answers and the thing is gathering momentum you and i you see let us break it down here <clears throat> yes answers but remember before anything happens there must be a catalyst that will trigger it if the welfare of the police officers are well taken care of Many of them will not be doing these things they are doing. Go and check the police barracks where they are living. How many police officers can afford to send their children to a good school? When the government has killed the government schools, it is not private schools. They were looking for ways to survive, to make ends meet, and all the rest. And that is why you see some of these things. The major root of this thing is just about bad governance. If you remember, in the wisdom of the Constitution, the 99 Constitution as amended, provides that the main aim of government is for what? Welfare and security of the people. In the wisdom, welfare first before security. Because if you have a good welfare package for people, security will be, you know, a lot of vices will, will, will be minimal. But that is what is causing all these things. Because if there is bad governance, it will bring about insecurity. It will bring about ingenuity. It will bring about corruption. And you know, I have defined this severally that what is even corruption? We say corruption, corruption. Check the dictionary meaning of corruption or Google it. If I quote, let me quote Black's Law Dictionary, sixth edition, define corruption as any dishonest conduct. This present government today, are they honest? in all their conducts but the major question he asked is yes that, i think we'll has it been hijacked it has not like like, it, it uh, has, like hi Ahmed is hijacked by who is it hijacked by the celebrities or hijacked by the youths remember remember that so far you have not seen anybody yet who is not a youth in this protest two of us so far and if you look at it Nigerian population is made up of not less than 70 to 75 percent of youths. That is why you see all these things. And the bad governance in this country, the people holding Nigeria to ransom, they are less than five percent of the population of this country. So let's see how they win the fight. Okay, maybe one of the reasons why he's saying um, it's been hijacked is the fact that um, there's so much funds made available to these protesters. They eat. They um, okay. They now we now hear that there's an online um, Sorosoke radio station that uh, you know. So all these things, when you look at it holistically, you want to feel that uh, there's someone 
pushing from behind. There's someone who is uh, the trust for all this protest. What what do you do say you about do that? you know how much the people will make if every youth in Nigeria decides to contribute 100, 100 naira for this? The protest, I assure you, will last for more than one year. But remember, what is happening now is because many people, even very soon, companies will start supporting. Very soon, other bodies, private bodies, will start supporting. Because nobody is happy with what is happening in the country. There's nobody. We're talking about food. Many people are volunteering to, of, to bring food bring water, bring minerals and all the rest on their own. Remember in 2012 when the, we did the um, uh, self Nigerian group, the same incident happened. There was food, there was water, there was minerals, there were beers, everything. Okay, look at it. In Lekki, last weekend, the youth has to go and put in, what do you call it? These uh, for, for people to charge their phones, and they knew that the, 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 the football, something, whatever, La Liga, and all the rest is on. They have to even do a big board where people will be watching it so that you don't have a cause to say you're going home. They see it as it is their cause. I remember somebody supporting Mr. President that he called the youths lazy, but look at what the youths are doing with their hands. Now, if the youth can do this kind of thing, now, if they get a little support, and you know, I have been saying that what we need in every government, government is a neighboring environment for people to work. Nigerians wants to work. Our youth are very creative to do something. Now, when you see some of the forms coming in, there are so many people individually. If I have up to 10 billion, I will donate it. Because right. it is for our future. And the future of our children because my own children will still grow up and have their own children what legacy are we living um uh, uh thank you very much i'm sure you are so very passionate about that just, just as you started the, uh, by saying that that's your life life of activism now let's look at this this issue uh, 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 a bit more uh, closely the demand for the five point demand that was presented to uh, the president to the governor of Lagos State. Uh, three of them have actually been acceded to, and government has said it was willing to actually complete the fight. I mean, there's no debate about whether government is in agreement with those demands or not. From seven, it has been raised to uh, five, it has been raised to seven. There are serious concerns among the Nigerians that look, the youth must actually uh, 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 coordinate itself better and present a face. The, the, a face to it and then bring out all the demands at once so that government will know how to address them. This piecemeal uh, uh, service where after addressing one, you now come up with a fresh one. Who knows whether maybe at the end of the day, the list will I mean, be increased to 100 or 200. Governance, when you're talking about uh, 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 bad governance, is this something that can be changed overnight? Government is saying that yes, we have listened. Vice President has spoken, governors have spoken, the National Assembly has spoken. He said, okay, fine, we identify with all this, uh, what you stand for. They give us time to actually address these issues. Can bad governance be addressed overnight? Yes, my answer is a, a capital yes. How? Oh. Fine. Your body language alone, the body language of the president alone, the body language of the governor alone, the body language of the house of the uh, of the legislators alone, the body language of various local government chairmen alone can change situation. What do I mean? <clears throat> you see, let me give you an example. When they said they were going to clean Ogoni land, they brought uh, they did carnival there, you know, dancing and you don't do all these things. Let people wake up and see something happening. They know that you are serious. You talked about expansion. After five, it's not seven. We to get to hundred and more than that. Let me give you a little history. <clears throat> the less some on Nakambakwe, the then governor of Imo State, the old Imo State, he was called Oliver Twist. He was called the Weeping Governor. 
I want some more. He was an M a MPP governor under the the the, 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 if the government in the federal was MPN. But he achieved result more than any other governor during his time. Mbako will have a 10 point agenda and go and submit it in Abuja. They will do one. He will come back with that one and thank them. He will go back again, added another one or two. That was why they called him Oliver Twist. And go and look at what he achieved. There is no limit to what the youths wants in this country. There's no limit. Because in a country where somebody will go to school, and at the end of the day, nothing to hold on. In a country where foreigners, the Indians and all the rest, are subjecting Nigerians to torture in their own country in the name of casual work. Moreover, casualty of work has been illegalized in the country, but the government is keeping silent. Why? Because they are all the owners of all these companies, using all these foreigners as a rubber stamp. Who is fooling who? I once did a case here with a company where an Indian man brutalized a Nigerian, a young boy, and the boy fainted. When we brought that matter went to police station, each time they made attempt to go and arrest the man, the record will come from Abuja. And that is why somebody will tell you that I will deal with you and use your Nigerian police, nothing will happen. And actually nothing will happen. The politicians will tell you, I will kill you, and nothing will happen. And actually, nothing will happen. A policeman will tell you, I will kill you, I will shoot, and nothing will happen. And actually, nothing will happen. In a country where we are all stakeholders, where the citizens are supposed to hold the power, we say power belongs to the people. Is it in Nigeria? Okay, let me cut. Sorry, but, but permit me to actually cut. You are saying that bad governance can be ended in a day overnight yes now what more do you actually want in terms of demonstration of sincerity the governor of Lagos state some will be governor some will was actually at lake you saw him yes you saw the or everything that happened yes there. have you seen the governor of kuala state that's a governor of Brazil. <laughs> he tracked he was on okada and all that he was sweating because they stopped him now they you heard what uh, governor of Makide has said what he has done over mm. time some other governors in the east and the north now, how do how, the way you say overnight can be changed overnight? How, what more body language? What more uh, demonstration of sincerity? Maybe more, mean, more practical more terms. Practical fine, terms. fine. Yeah. Because they are not being sincere. I think they are being political. It's just fear of them. Let me give you an example. I've always if said you were a governor, what, you, what would you have? I'm done? coming there now. I've always said, like in Lagos states, Lagos states. I always see Lagos states as a different body. Because if Nigeria is collapsing, it's Lagos State. If Nigeria is improving, it's Lagos State. That's why Lagos is called uh, the center, center of excellence. excellence. Have you asked yourself a question? Why is it that it was the, the governor of Lagos State that will first go to Abuja? Have the courage. Summon the courage to go and meet the president. I don't know whether you understand me. The, it was the governor of Lagos State that was the first person that summoned courage to go and meet the president and submitted the communique. Since that time that communication was submitted, what has happened? There is little. Oh, are you saying? I, I mean, SARS was disbanded. Well, I'm coming. Disbanded. No, you're asking me a question. I'm, I'm coming. Now, disbanded how? These things are rhetorics. Disbanded on the pages of newspaper. Disbanded that you now brought what is called, it said it's, it's what right. or what and all the rest. I don't know where these people have their reason. Let me give you an example. What we need now is a total overhauling of the security apparatus in this country, especially the Nigerian police. And that can be done overnight? Yes, it can. Let me show, tell you how it can work. Eh? Recall all the commissioners of police of various states. Let Nigerians be seeing what you're doing. Ask them what is happening in your state. There are so many petitions lying in Abuja. I have written some against the SAS operatives in my state. They are all lying there. Some of them are lying before the commissioner of police in Imo State. What has been done? These are some of the problems. Gather all these things. Let people watch. Let people know that you are being proactive. Let people know that you are working for their interest. You said you are a security man. You are your the, the primary function of the police is for security of lives and properties of the citizens. But it is not the other way around. Now the military is threatening they may come in. 
Coming to do what? No, Look at the law. I'm coming. I'm coming. Military never tries. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. It's okay, speculation. Wait, wait, okay, never speculation. Tried. But remember that in every rumor there's an element of truth. No, but they have never let them know. Where that is that is pressure. Compact that that, 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 that is nothing to do with that. Is, why would they do it now? They said it's been there in the that, that's year. The the is, this is not. This is not the best time to do, to launch it. Oh, because there will be problem. People are on the streets. The primary function of the military is to guide the, 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 the territory of the country anyway, for I external, even, external I, force. I even have a peculiar question to that uh, military setup, that uh, military program. But let's take a break first. When we return, we'll continue with the discussion. We'll take this uh, commercial break from Boundless Multi-Services Solutions Limited. Please stay with us. Okay, thanks for still being there. We still have a uh, barrister justice Uhuibu here. So before we went on that break, we were talking about the uh, the Nigerian army angle in this, in all this. And um, I have a challenge with the fact that um, they said they want to fight cyber, they want to be involved in cyber crime. That that's their focus this year. And I asked the question that is is it not the same thing EFCC is doing? DSS is doing, the Nigerian police is doing, the ICPC is doing. Why will the Nigerian army see it as their responsibility to fight cybercrime? You see, because there is so much duplicity of function. And again, because of the way this government is being run, nobody adheres to its own line of duty again. In law, there are what we call ultraviolence doctrine. Going above your scope of work. That is what is happening today. And because the government today, allow, that's why I talked about body language. Because the government allows everything to flow. Because they want to intimidate everybody. But I even remember that last year there was a court <clears throat> injunction about Operation Positive uh, Identification fine, or of something from the military. And they were me, the, there was a judgment against um, them. Uh, uh, my sister, let me ask you a question. In this administration now, how many courts, orders, rulings have been obeyed by this administration? None. I could remember between 2012 and 2015, before the then uh, uh, government left, the NBA even went as far as bringing um, a register for members to be writing court orders that have been flouted by the government you did not you don't see such thing today again how many point when shower went to court and was granted but was he released immediately that is the problem we are saying impunity to the highest order that what we're experiencing look at the military talking about cyber what is their business is nigeria going to a war outside the country to fight cyber crime there this is a shame the kind of people we are, we are, we are, we are serving responsibility to perform in the country. Like you said, we have the DSS there, we have the SS, uh, well, SSS to DSS, we have the EFCC, we have the ICPs and all the, Even within the Nigerian architectural uh, organogram, this issue of SAS, anti this, anti that, anti this one, anti this one, there's no unit you don't see in the Nigerian police. They are all doing the same thing. All right, now uh, uh, moving forward now, because uh, like I said, day 13 or thereabouts, and uh, nobody knows how you are even predicted 100 point demand over time. Uh, 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 but uh, the Senate president has already say, has said that we are just uh, leaving, uh, maybe exiting uh, uh, COVID 19 gradually, and this one is coming to us. That this alone is capable of hurting hurting the economy and individuals and all that. Now, we cannot continue to inflict so much pain <laughs> upon, upon ourselves. So how well do you think this can be managed so that it can be result-oriented and it will not be fatal? Well, it's not a matter of... Uh, his statement is even an understatement by saying it's 
enough to hurt the economy. It's already hurting the economy because there have been a total lockdown for some time now. But why will it not hurt the economy? Why won't there be a total lockdown when many people, when some few individuals are feeding fat from the same economy that is owned by everybody? That is what is arousing this anger. There's no other thing. Look at the recent budget. Look at what is budgeted to the National Assembly. Look at what is budgeted to the executive. Their hospital, their housing, their wardrobe allowance, and all the rest. But people are on the streets every day dying. Children are dying. Go to our hospitals. Nothing is there. Go to the schools. There are so many schools that they don't have chairs to sit down. Look at our roads. Our roads have become a dead trap. So which one do we talk? The worst of it all is hunger. As of today, a bag of rice is about thirty-seven to thirty-nine thousand. A bag of rice, and you are begging uh, minimum wage to how much? Thirty thousand. Now tell me how a family of four, five, six will survive it? Is rice the only thing they are going to eat forever? Look at what they did during the pandemic. They said they were giving palliative. They politicized it and all the rest. But look at the kind of food that were being shared to these boys now because of passion. I give kudos and I thank the governor of Lagos State for doing what he did. You see, right from time, I've seen that man as a noble person. Let me just say it. Because, like I said, he was the first person to summon courage to travel to Abuja. In fact, you, you, when he was even talking to the president, you can see how he was jittering. Because to him, I believe, what can we do now to cushion the effect of this thing? And I also understand he has set up a judicial panel of inquiry and all the rest in, in Lagos State and some other things. I will not be surprised if he the government... has gone ahead to unmask. Uh, the names of the officers fine, behind the, fine. I'm calling the, the attack I'm killing. I will not even be I will not even be surprised to discover that he will be sending food materials to those people because let me tell you one thing injury to one is what injury to all he's a Nigerian he lives here he has his own children let me tell you one thing one bad thing about bad governance if you feel it's not affecting you directly it's affecting you indirectly Ojuku wrote a book because I'm involved directly or indirectly we are all involved you have brothers you have nephews, you have friends, it will even affect. So why not? But is it not curious to if 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 it if it affects all of us? That but that is, some people are actually being sponsored, so to speak, to attack the protesters. So the, 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 that is the, the, they have been denials here and no, there. No, that is but these Nigerians are they no, 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 different no, from no, the ones that, that no, no, that is so what, the, what do you think yes. will be responsible? Is the the they claim everything on leadership. Fine. What about the followership? Fine. That is telling the ingenuity of people. Now remember, some of those people that were caught were interviewed. They said they were paid one thousand, one thousand five, by people to go and attack these people. There are people who did it. Those people that contracted them are the people that they are the enemies of the country. Remember, as I speak to you, this protest there's no leader, mm. and why there's no leader? Because once you get a, you can identify a leader now, the government will want to use that person to compromise, but. I am so happy that for the first time in the history of this country, no tribal sentiment, no religious sentiment, no ethnic, no ethnic sentiment. We are all Nigerians. I remember what Dino Melaya said one day. Can you say that again? Yes. Because I'm aware, you, you and I are aware that uh, a group, as we are talking, a group in the north is also saying, leave SARS alone. Who are those? SARS are, oh, you are aware. Oh, yes, in it's not one government. Not just not that government. Are you aware? Nigerians living in the north say, SARS has worked out. Are you aware? Are you aware? So, are you aware that all these states, all the northern states, there is still this protest going on? It's the same thing we are talking about, people sponsoring these talks to attack this group. Those people are also sponsored. They are being sponsored. But it's unfortunate, but what you should understand is in every society you must have the good, the bad, and the ugly. But once the good tiding is higher, they will always surpass. That is just the thing. So, for example, people are waiting for Lagos State to kick off, to do it. And immediately, Shawalu started doing what he was doing, the good thing he was doing. Other governors joined. 
instead of coming to attack, they now joined. So, will you? For example, in Anambra State, there was one popular SAS, former SAS commander that is being mentioned, one, uh, of course, one somebody, one for. He has retired as SAS commander and given appointment by the governor of uh, Anambra State. But as I speak to you, uh, uh, um, the media and message had it that he has been uh, relieved of his duties and almost i don't know whether they've arrested him now because the governor said he will face prosecution uh, well, i heard about the news that he escaped well if he escaped now whether he escaped or not at least that is a good one that they are being fished up you see you see let me tell you one thing nigerians are very very industrious did you ask yourself are you not surprised how they went to discover to fish out all these officers in all the states and publish their names with their pictures and everything and none of them have come out to deny it none that is to tell you whatever you're doing in life you should be careful people all are watching all right so exactly. you have not addressed the question how do we do we do, how, this one is uh, like an indefinite strike indefinite lockdown how do we chart uh, a, a way forward in terms of yeah. Uh, I mean, getting their demands and the government to, now, yes. and then uh, making sure that life returns normal. You know, you and I know the hardship. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me. No, let I'm asking let you. Let me shock you now. Let me shock you now. Are you not surprised and shocked that your president has not issued a statement since this thing started? No, Physically, he, he yeah. tweeted. Yeah. I mean, we are not talking about tweet. What, what do you mean by tweeting? How many people are going on Twitter? We expect Mr. President, who is the father of the nation, these boys are youths. Come out openly. Address them, my children. We are sorry. You see, the problem we have is that we don't want to accept responsibility. The vice President did that as well. Who is the, we are not talking about Vice President. No, we are talking about. We are executive. talking about. Yes, you know, no, 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 why let us let us stop being economical with the truth? I'm expecting Mr. President to come out and call the youths, my children. Please, we are sorry we have failed you. Would that have swayed the It will. Would it have As a father, when your children are angry, the moment you come and talk to them in a peaceful manner, don't worry, please, I will handle it. They will first of all calm down. We're expecting him to talk. I'm not letting him not come out and say fellow Nigerians. No. Are we not no, 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 no. These are his children. His grandchildren. He should address them as his children and grandchildren. So that that person will be there. So that that attachment will be there. Then we will listen. I asked the question earlier if you are a governor, what would you do in practical terms this within, is, within days or weeks? This is what I've said now. Yeah. said now is what I would the first, the first step I would take. Well, and secondly, listen to time. me. And secondly, secondly, I will have to call the leadership of the National Assembly. All of us will march to the protesters. Without no security, we are Nigerians. First of all, before you become anything, we will address them. I could remember one day when I led a protest at Alausa during the time of Fashola. The police came out, they barricaded everywhere. They brought out their guns. I took my megaphone and addressed them. I said, my brothers, we are here for you. All of them brought down their guns. <laughs> yes, let's take some messages uh, here. He said, good morning to you all. My name is Eze. The man in the middle is speaking the mind of the youth in Nigeria. Please, you, you need to know that we are sitting on a time bomb which is waiting to explode one day. Uh, that's um, easy. From uh, easy. Where is well, it? He didn't mention where he's sending the message from. Have another one here. He said the SAS CEOs collect in excess of 500,000 naira to post officers to SAS. He said um, the same one will still, these same ones will still supervise SWAT. The third point, he said, all these career civil servants are our major problems. They are the system that needs to be changed. That is why the old man in the studio, uh, who is the old man? I don't know who that is, is defending the rot, restructuring or revolution. Mm. Well, that's his opinion. Uh, let me take one more. The problem of Nigeria revolves around the ruling class. They remain the worst set of SARS. 
all patriotic Nigerians should join the agitation for a better Nigeria and SAS and bad governance. That's from where? He didn't, he didn't include I think they should stay. Okay, think, let me take this the one. Location this, is is from, important. Yeah, this is from Chris from Alagbadu. He said, I know very well that Nigeria's problem will end one day. What the sorry, what the people could not what the people we voted for could not address and solve. The youth are rising to solve. Let the old factors begin to pack their baggage and leave the stage for them in 2023. But I would like to ask a question based on this, that what does this portend for 2023? Well, <clears throat> now, now that the youths will have woken up, because some of us started this fight earlier before now, since uh, years back, but many people did not see why we were fighting what we were talking yes some of us have been in different tv stations radio stations and all the rest but i thank god where we are today i believe <clears throat> that we need the younger ones to take over governance in this country because he who wears the shoe know where it pinches let me tell, let me give you an example just in one minute yes okay. when i was in school all these names put your i would obey your minister for information your go, your president they were all the people that were in government when i was in nursery school they are still there how do you think the country can why didn't you vote? vote for ypp in 2020 in I con remember i contested i was a vice presidential no, candidate presidential. Of, of, yes i was a vice presidential the last year of NAC, national okay. Coalition council and i'm coming out again for president okay. will ypp win in 2023 no i was i did not contest under ypp but it doesn't matter That's young people party. Yeah, it doesn't, my party was also a young people's party okay but it doesn't matter but what we are saying is that right. we need the all right groups. but what do you think about this uh agitation these uh protesters forming a party you know getting themselves more organized what yes yes it will get to that okay i assure you okay but not now no no uh, it's not everything we'll disclose but it will get to that all right okay well thank you so much for being a part of the program this morning i will believe that uh, people have learned one or two things and then we hope that we, we hope that you all stay safe make sure that you all stay safe that's very important well, before we go we'll take uh, this last package from boundless multi-services solutions limited talking about housing and lands for you to buy that's what it's all about okay my name is jimoke michaels we'll see you again on wednesday and i'm banji busari thanks for being part of today's edition of solid see you again on wednesday jimoke bye-bye